In our energy efficient world, why aren't Class D amplifiers more accepted? This is a great question that comes from Ron in Florida. Paul, I think there's a lot of confusion as to whether an amplifier has to be capable of delivering a lot of amperage to the loudspeaker in order to be considered a musical amplifier. No doubt the designs of the past were focused on Class A, massive transformers, lots of capacitors and instantaneous amps, sometimes exceeding 100. But an energy efficient world is moving towards Class D, which doesn't seem to be obsessed with one ohm loads and high amperage. And yet, Class D is regularly slammed in the forums as unmusical. What are your thoughts on the subject? As always, I've got lots of thoughts on the subject. Class D is analog, even though people consider it digital. In fact, Class D is something called pulse width modulation. And it basically works in a very efficient manner like this. An input signal comes in and it is compared to a rising ramp. Now, what does a rising ramp mean? Picture a voltage that has nothing to do with the input signal. It, we call it a triangle wave. And just picture a triangle. And that triangle is actually voltage rising from the base of the triangle to the very peak of the triangle on a very linear ramp and then back down again, like a V upside down. So just picture that. Now we have this this V, this upside down V, this triangle wave is going up, down, up, down. And we have a device called a comparator. And the comparator on one of its input, it compares two things. So it, on one input, the rising triangle wave uh, is compared to the input voltage, which is our musical signal. And as uh, the musical signal uh, is, is compared to this rising triangle wave, what happens, and this, is, this happens very quickly, at, at little windows, it just, the higher the, the reference, which is our triangle wave, is to the input signal, if we have a high input signal, it just stays on longer. And so in order to duplicate a higher output signal, which is our music, what we want at the end of the day, we have a longer pulse or a shorter pulse. And these happen like every hundred thousandths of a second. Suffice it to say, Class D amplifiers are very different than a Class AB amplifier, which is a more traditional Little signal in, big signal out. It looks, the input signal, the output signal look identical. And every step of the way, it's making a larger identical signal, where a Class D amplifier is certainly not that. A Class D amplifier, you start with an input signal, and the output, as I said, looks like a series of longer and shorter pulses. And these longer and shorter pulses then have to have their edges taken off, which requires a filter on the output. So we want to shape the thing with this, this filter. And that's where we get into trouble with Class D circuitry because this filter is a very difficult piece of circuitry to design and do properly so that it can actually power our speakers without changing impedances and without mucking up the sound. And over the years, designers have spent Hundred, thousands, hundreds of thousands of design hours working specifically on these filters because the basic Class D modulators are the same as when we first introduced the hybrid Class A years ago. We, we had one of the very first Class D amplifiers in the market and it was a great sounding amplifier, but it used pretty much the same technology. All the, the work that's been done has pretty much been in the output filters and trying to linearize the output so that it's very low noise. You don't see much of that. It, it eliminates that switching, which is the on-off pulses that we have that are these longer and shorter pulses. You're trying to eliminate those transitions because that can look like this 100 kilohertz noise. So that's what those filters do, and that's where most of the energy has gone into. Modern Class D amplifiers, if designed by good companies like B&O 
and Hypex. Those are two really excellent companies that sell to our industry these Class D modules. Now we happen to, I like both. We happen to use ICE, which was formerly owned by B&O, Bang & Olufsen. And they broke off and they, they, they went independent. They are the ones we chose because they're very easy to work with. They have a very neutral sound and we can control the way they sound by our input stage. So just like on our BHK amplifier series where we put a vacuum tube on the input, that is what determines the way the amplifier sounds. And then all we had to do, all we had to do, he said, <laughs> all Bascom had to do, was design an output stage that was very neutral and just linear as hell, low distortion, able to control loudspeakers perfectly. Then the sound is set by the input stage, which in the case of the BHK is a tube. In the case of our Stellar series, which uses the very neutral sounding, powerful output stages manufactured by ICE, and they are class D, we then attach our analog cells to the front and the analog cells are where we shape the sound in the way that we want so it sounds musical. So a lot of history here where class D amplifiers sounded like crap, bright, hard, flat, not so good. But that has changed. Perceptions haven't. So today amplifier companies like ourselves and a few others have figured out how to make Class D sound extremely musical. And I would encourage you to listen to a Stellar amp because those are some of the most musical amps we've ever made, bar none. I mean, they're not as good as the BHK, come on, but they are certainly better than any other amplifier other than the BHK we've ever made and they're Class D. So it can be done, it is being done, and we are doing it. Thanks. Good question. Bye.